This is a follow-up to the other video that discusses adding one component to a vapor-liquid mixture. And the idea here is to try and explain, using mass balances, how the liquid and vapor compositions can stay the same when one component is added to a binary vapor-liquid equilibrium mixture. Keep the temperature constant, and we keep the pressure constant. What we're looking at is this type of diagram. So pressure versus mole fractions of component A. So here is pure component A, and here is pure component B. Plotting pressure here, the entire diagram is at a fixed temperature. And we'll start here with mostly liquid, but a vapor-liquid mixture, and we'll add just A. So the overall composition of the mixture increases, so we move to the right. But until we add enough A, we'll still be in this vapor-liquid equilibrium range, and we'll just have more vapor and less liquid because we're adding the more volatile component. A has a higher saturation pressure. Here's the saturation pressure of A. Here's the saturation pressure of B. And so we want to just demonstrate how we can keep the compositions the same in both phases, even though we're adding only one of the components. And the way to look at it is by looking at mass balances. So this diagram looks complicated, but let's, let's really break down what we're doing here. So we start out as I mentioned, it's mostly liquid. So we have one mole of liquid. So the green is liquid, and we have a tenth of mole of vapor. So the light yellow is vapor. The equilibrium compositions that we can see from this diagram, liquid composition, mole fraction of A is 0.4. It's enriched in A, so the vapor composition, mole fraction is 0.7. So if we have one mole of liquid, means four-tenths of a mole of A and six-tenths of a mole of B, so the overall mole fraction for liquid is 0.4. And if we have one-tenth of a mole of vapor, it means 0.07 moles of A and 0.03 moles of B, so the overall composition of the vapor is 0.7 mole fraction. And now we're going to add 0.5 moles of A. Well, we could add it as vapor or as liquid, but it's going to end up in the liquid phase in order to maintain equilibrium. So if we add A and it goes in the liquid phase, then we must also add B to liquid phase to keep the mole fraction the same, which means some of the liquid that we started with would have to evaporate. When I pick the numbers because I know the answer, if I evaporate two-tenths of mole of A, then I have to evaporate three-tenths of mole B because this still has an overall mole fraction of 0.4. The liquid mole fraction doesn't change. That's my final liquid phase with the same mole fraction. So if I add 0.5 moles of A and I evaporate 0.2 moles, then I'll have added 0.7 moles of A to the vapor phase, and I will have added 0.3 moles of B to the vapor phase. Overall now, I have still the same composition of the vapor. This vapor plus the starting vapor means I have 0.77 moles of A, 0.33 moles of B, I've maintained the vapor composition, I've maintained the liquid composition, even though I added only one component. And I've done this by putting that component in the phase that is enriched in A and evaporating enough of the liquid to maintain vapor-liquid equilibrium. If I add too much A to the system, I would evaporate all of the liquid and I would end up with a vapor phase that is a higher mole fraction of A. So we started around here and we end up somewhere over here. If I had enough A, we'd end up out here. Same pressure, but now just a vapor and enriched significantly in component A.